Good morning. Session two, laser cut. Also for the people on the little screen. <laughs> our, like any feedback? Do you want to comment something from yesterday? All of you? Anyone? That was fast, yeah. Yeah, we will help you. No worries on that. Uh, no. Oh, okay. You had all the points. I, I did one time, and I got I think like 19, 19 points, and I thought. <laughs> I thought that, that I need all the points, so I did it. In that, in that, in that case, in that case, we didn't go that fast. <laughs> we need to go faster and give more content. Uh, no, no, you don't need to get that point. Like I think about like 65 or 70 percent is over. Um, <laughs> Mm -hmm. Except the question about putting the machine. How? Huh? The question about putting the machine is going to fail. I don't remember the question, like, my memory, sorry. Like, what was the question exactly? No, there was a question about putting uh, the machine as a machine. Ah. This one we cannot fail. Yeah, that one we cannot fail, yeah. <laughs> um. So yesterday we commented uh, the different types of wavelengths of lasers a little bit. The, the ones that we are using are CO2 lasers that are more the most standard ones. One of the difference between, <coughs> for example, um, Trotex machine and uh, Epilog. Epilog, these are just names that I'm stating of like, uh, laser cutters and a spirit. Spirit laser or Chinese CO2 laser cutter, for example, Rutic 400. Mm -hmm. Between these machines, for example, Trotic, let's say, I don't want to say brand machine, but more brand machine and like other brands that are also renowned and they have like stability, they have a lot of support. They are, they have a main difference between these ones and the standard, like what we call a standard, like laser cutter of CO2. First, uh, there is a lot of difference in the build quality of the machine per se. Of course, uh, also that difference is implied in the price. Like you can have like a good utilitarian car, or you can have like a really premium car. It could happen the same. What is all, what could be one of the differences? Um, <clears throat> these machines, the mechanism, the rails and guides, for example, are open. So that means like the bearings are open uh, to the dust and are not protected from the dust and the smoke that comes out from the machine. So usually that makes them last long, less time, and they need more maintenance because you need to have more, you need to clean more. Also, another point will be that most of these machines, they depends on the brand, but they have like the the laser beam. The mirrors are open. It means you are easy. You can easily see the mirror, and by so the zone of the laser is kind of unprotected. In machines like this one, let's try to see if we find an open one here. Uh, you have. Everything is covered in a closed U, U profile that actually has a belt that is protecting the laser beam from your hand that you will never be able to touch because all these machines, I would say that you don't have, like don't use that kind of machine. They have a safety mechanism that if, in case you open the door, the laser cannot be switched on. It's like a mechanic switch or magnetic switch in general. Another big difference is these machines, the carriage, the moving part is lighter or has bigger and stronger motors and has reinforcing, reinforced um, belts. The 2400 belts. Let's see, we can find a close picture on that. The belts on this kind of machines, oh, here, 
the balsam discarding machine actually like double the width of the other CO2 laser cutter. And also the belt is reinforced. How we can know, for example, the belt is white, that means it's scalar reinforced. The, for example, in Balauro, you have one thing is laser cutter that it has black belts that is a standard like fiber belt, but it's still a standard fiber belt. The one? A big one. So <coughs> these machines, as they are lighter, they have more powerful motor, the jog, and this what is actually the little movement that the machine can have the play between one thing in one direction and the other one that is also called backlash. So a machine when moves to one direction, stops and moves to the other direction, might be a little bit on center, like has a little bit of jog. That movement is called backlash in machines. And it's actually the idle movement when you change fast from one direction to another one. Why? Because uh, happens the same, for example, if with your bicycle, the chain, when you run it to the front, it makes tension. And when you run to the other direction, it makes some tension and has a little bit of gain, a play. That is called backlash. So a machine that is really important, especially by a machine that is meant for accuracy. Laser cuts are really meant for accuracy, like zero to millimeter is really small. And the accuracy of the machines are measured in, uh, machines are measured in two different types. Is one repeatability, another one is accuracy. Accuracy is, let's say, the minimum amount of movement that you can produce. For example, the minimum amount of movement, I remember from these CNCs, the small CNCs, the one that are orange in the other room, is 0 0.01 millimeters. That's incredibly low. Repeatability is with what deviation we can repeat the movement 100 times. So if we repeat the same movement, the machine will not exactly go to the same location. So for example, robots, machines, are measured in accuracy and repeatability. In repeatability, the, in robots, that's usually one of the biggest problems, repeatability. So you can buy extra packages to allow higher repeatability. And usually that's, that's another like super extra cost that you add, for example, robotic arms. In laser cutter, that problem is not that huge because you assume that repeatability is really, really low. That means like we always get to the same position. Can you correct that if you, for example, you have something that has to move 10 times and then it's going to have a difference between no. the press and the press. That is the machine and it's how it's been built and how is the frame and it's, it's about frame, belts, motors, control software too, like separation of four. So what's one of, that's one of the difference between machine prices. Repeatability, in, for example, in Trust one is one of the best brands for like this kind of kind of CO2 lasers or not also fiber lasers. As an extra point, that is why Trotec military grade laser. They they never show this. Uh, um, air cooled laser CO2. Okay, is the laser source. So yesterday I showed you that a CO2 laser pipe. Laser CO2 tube. Yes, it's something like this. That is a big glass pipe that has a high discharge electricity electrodes and is filled with CO2 gas in this case. So this is made out of uh, glass, it's really fragile and needs to be water cooled. So it doesn't heat up and doesn't break, basically, it doesn't explode. So this these elements need to be replaced because the electrodes and the CO2 gets damaged and wasted at after some point. That's why CO2 they slowly lose power among the years and among usage. So for example, in this, I'm, I'm, I'm stating the name because this depends on the machine, how you use it, etc. But these tubes have a life length of like between 5,000 and 10,000 hours. That will depend a lot. For example, a bad machine the electricity discharge unit, the one that is giving the pulses, if the electricity is not constant, is not current, has really back a lot of noise, then that will damage the tube much faster. If the rest of the electronics is really good, it will not damage the tube faster. But that will depend on the machine. But these tubes have to be replaced, let's say in a standard lab use, every from one to three years. 
they can last, usually no more than that, because they get wasted. For example, in the previous lab that I work, we change it, we change them every year. The laser pipe is one, it's quite expensive unit, uh, but this one's are, now they are getting really more and more popular. And more or less a 100 watts laser source like this, glass, glass one is 1,000, 1,500 euros. It's cheap. <laughs> uh, the difference between, for example, Atrotec is they are, they use what is called military grade laser source. So the pipe is not anymore glass. Actually, I don't know how it's inside. I just know that it's military grade. That means it has military standards, like has heat protection, has a lot of safety controls. And actually the build quality of these lasers are way more expensive and way more difficult to manufacture. That's one of the reasons why the price, for example, of the Trotec 400, Trotec 400, I think is 45,000, 60,000 euros. Meanwhile, for example, you can get one of these laser cutters that actually the build size is bigger. It's almost not all double, but like 50% more in size by 15,000, 20,000 euros nowadays. So it's like three times more for a slightly smaller machine. Yes, but that implies like build construction quality, software control, like for example, the Trotec software is quite good compared to a, like more, you know, you have in Ballaura, you would add, if COVID at some point gets better, we will be go to Ballaura and we will show you the other facilities so you can able to see other machines. Uh, that is, they have machines similar like this one and the control software is slightly more annoying because like it's like a copy of a software that they modify and they copy. So it's like the licensing of this program is not really clear in general. They work and they work well. I have all my life worked with these machines and they work, they make the job. This is, imagine like, I will make the comparison. This is like a Russian tank works, it's slow <laughs> and it's heavy duty task. The other ones is like having a Lamborghini. Like it's Russian tank versus Lamborghini. The speed that the throttle can reach, for example, for rastering, and, and this one is old already and is not exactly the fastest model. It's like easily like 10 times faster to do a raster in the Trotec than in the Chinese one, just because the speed acceleration is way slower. Also the file management, for example, just as simple as when you send a file, you upload it to the machine. That file is uploaded to a memory. In the Trotec, the memory is self-erased. In the one that they have in Ballaura, is you need to erase it manually when the memory gets full. And actually, you know, because it's not uploading you, or allowing you to upload new files, not because it has any automation. It's so silly, like, but these kind of things is what may add the price, for example, in the other cutters. Um, just to talk about the type of laser, for example, a laser pipe of 100 watts of CO2, glass one, is 1,000 euros. A laser source military grade, for example, for a Trotec or a Spirit machine, I know because this month, like this, uh, there is a group of Telegram of all the instructors, like of the, a, a lot of instructors of the lab, like we are around like 400, and like managers, etc. They have three labs had to replace the laser and they were asking for quotations, like guys, what are you getting for the prices? Like, and one that was getting like 10,000 euros just for the laser source, another one, 6,000 euros. Like, oh my God, these machines are so expensive. Yes, you don't need to do the maintenance, but for example, Natrotech, in this case has seven years, we have never changed the laser source because the laser pipe just lasts longer. Yes, it loses power, but at a different speed. So it slowly degrades, not like the CO2 laser that at some point, like you not you cannot even cut half of the material that you were able to cut before. So the maintenance would be more or less the same? No, it's three times less maintenance. This one? Yeah. Okay. Like in replacement of components. But if the uh, half price, the average? Because in the other one, you have to do more materials, but and the, the price is lower. Yeah. Mm, that is the balance. And that's actually that in that that will play. It, the Chinese at the end, they are slightly, they are cheaper in everything. Even if you have to do more maintenance, like changing the pipe yearly, like predictive, pre preventive, like maintenance, you change the pipe yearly, even if it has not degrade. In three years, you have wasted 3,000 euros in seven years, 7,000 euros, more or less, a little bit more, let's go 10,000. 
the change in the pipe for the Trotec right now is like almost the same price as buying a half new machine. But the speeds and let's say if you want to go for production, like they are unbeatable. Like the amount of files that you can launch with these machines are faster. You can produce faster, half the time you cut save time and time is money also. But for example, finding big laser cutters that can cut thicker material in these kind of machines is way more difficult. They don't exist or they are just crazy in the expenses that you need to do to have a machine like that. For example, having a big, in this case, they have a machine that is huge, it's enormous. It's like yeah. 1.5 meter by 1.2 or something. Like it's almost double, almost triple the size of the Trotec. And it's, and I thought this was 18,000 because they bought it almost like semi new. And it's like, those machines really bigger the size, also bigger the pipe. So bigger the pipe means more power. So usually those machines are rated by size and power. Their bigger size means more power. So then machines, because of the size, should be around like 150 watts, real power 120, 130, a bit, a bit of downgrading 120, still can cut way thicker materials than the other one. That sometimes makes a difference. Depends on what kind of jobs you want to run on the machines too. For example, if you want to do like a lot of uh, small details like carving, set, et cetera, the focus that you can do on machines like Trotec is quite way more difficult to do it in machines like that. Like, as I state, it's Russian tank, heavy duty jobs, <laughs> or more or less heavy duty, the other ones are more sensible and prone to break. When they don't break, but when they break, yeah, <laughs> you have problems. Out of curiosity, there are now some of the like laser cutting machines that are supposed to be for your for home, like the blowtorch. How? Those ones are, uh, I haven't, there are a lot of discussion on these machines. These machines, they are more or less a 20, 30 watts CO2 machines. I don't know exactly the laser source. I, I can assume because of the price, it's a class five. But one of the things that breaks machines is not only the type of glass, but it's electronics. Okay. The discharge of the pulses of the laser, let's say the high frequency, high voltage power supply that fits the laser pipe, also quite important in the length life of the of the machine. These machines, as far as I know, only two labs have tried, and so far so good. They are happy. They are kind of household machines, not especially affordable, but they are good. Well, I mean, I think the fact that the cheapest one is two thousand compared to the like the ten thousand bigger. <laughs> I mean, is that for different price Yeah, but there enters like the what we call they don't even have a name is because it's, it's replicated everywhere without licensing and it's called the co2 40 watts laser cutter <laughs> <laughs> and they are like everywhere <laughs> and these guys are like three four hundred euros if you buy everything like all the packets with uh, exhaust ventilation like tur turbine to take out the fumes etc you can get these ones like lower than 600 800 euros the pipe of these ones doesn't last a lot depends on your usage it's like everything the glowforge let's say 3000 euros average more or less shipment etc has like leveling of the as I said, bed leveling is better the is faster on the movements too this is supposed to have less maintenance has a kind of filter for the fumes even if you still will need to put a pipe to the window <laughs> to, exa to, to exhaust the fumes yeah, that's one question I have because I saw someone using it on the internet and they didn't have that. I was like, I have what I have heard, I don't know, I don't know everything. I would I wish uh, is they have a filter inside, I have a filter inside, but the EPA filters at some point they get collapsed. So usually laser cuts actually there we have uh EPA filter machines that are inside buildings and they don't have like connection to the outside, you can use an EPA filter laser cutter a laser okay um, we have one to when we go to exhibits and usually let's go for the protect yeah is this guy so basically you connect the exhaust of the fumes here and has like carbon filters and different chemical filters so it will cleans up there and if they are quite efficient and are safe 
to use, but the price of these guys are in general quite, quite expensive. For example, we have one that we don't never have connected because we have connection to the outside. When we go to one to, for example, to the FIRA or whatever convention center that we can have a connection outside, we just go with this one. Uh, I don't know the price of this guy, but it's not cheap. Could be the cost of a small laser cutter. Um, some machine, for example, the Trotec 100 has this one embedded already because a machine that is supposed to be portable and to be in a small shop, let's say. Uh, so I can look for it, but Glowforge EPA filter. Well, I was just curious because, I mean, it's very expensive, but like, if you use it a lot, you can imagine saving. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that will depend. Well, for example, here you see <laughs> they have a dedicated. Also, think that the size of the filters will depend. Will basically tell you the amount of time that they can be used without getting filled, and we have to replace actually the filters and chemicals. So, if they have an embedded, maybe has an embedded filtering system based on the size of the machine it will not last a lot of hours um the other machines this mod this one like the small ones they basically don't don't have that <laughs> that doesn't even exist <laughs> and the software to use usually these machines they have a license corel draw license and you draw you send the file through corel draw i have used one of these ones they are like, good reliable like, for the prices it's good the one we have in Tower, it was also by Corel Draw. Corel Draw. A lot of the Chinese machines, like they have like Corel Draw extension to send the file. Yeah. They are good. Actually, I even they give me one as a gift, like they was broken and fixing as everything is open and you can actually see everything. It's a machine that is Hackable. You can hack it and it's easy to do maintenance if you know a little bit of machining too. So it depends on where you want to go to the iPhone side, everything closed environment, you cannot do everything and just pay. Or like more, let's say, build your own <laughs> machine type. Interesting for la I will say that is like the low cost ways of 3D printing now is going, that yes, they are good, they do the job, they are not the best, but you can hack them, you can upgrade them. There are a lot of, there are community as these machines, they have a huge community because they become popular. So actually there's a lot of hacks, improvements on this machine. Yeah, for example, CO2, 240. Actually this way is, the price gets low every year on these machines. Two years, three years ago was 400 bucks. And the size more or less of cutting of these machines is a A3 size, it's good. Like, and can cut, I have cut like up to four millimeter and the five if you go really low, not but the three, five millimeters the limit size of this machine. Usually they say 40 watts, the real is 30 watts, the power, output power. Like, um, just to say that there are different types of lasers. <laughs> uh, for example, in the case of CO2, we are producing a near infrared. Uh, wavelength of laser and that's why for example the trotec shield is bluish because usually it's the opposite of what actually filters for example um you will see that this kind of uh we they call it blue laser diode laser cutter that are open one i strongly not to use these guys <clears throat> that are like usually they look really similar to 3D, 3D printers but with a laser module those laser modules are dangerous first these machines are dangerous because they have several things first they are completely open machines that means the laser can be rejected and reflected mm -hmm. second the laser wavelength of this is uv and it's usually between 370 to 405 nanometers. Those lasers are 
like lasers that we use that is being used in industry. I have one of those lasers, but like the the wavelength of the laser is not UV is not good for humans in general for any like living object. For example, I use on my research, uh, but they have like special glasses for use them that filters. For example, this one is a safety protection glass for UV filtering. And you can see on the top, and it says the filtering. I think it's 260 nanometers to 400 or 520, no? 540. 540. So actually, those lasers, those those glasses avoid any kind of radiation from here to here. First. Also, why? Because these laser diodes, and unless you buy a really industrial one, they are not extremely accurate in the wavelength production. That means the, the main laser produces light in this frame, but produce uh, external non-controlled radiation in all its surroundings. It means it's not focused on the one point of the spectrum, has a wider uh, wavelength that it should have. So actually, the wider the wavelength and the more uncontrolled light that you produce, the worse it is, especially for humans and for safety. They cut, they do the job. We, have can, we can cut materials with them and no will not die, but yes, they are not especially safe machines. Or maybe it's a machine that you can have in your own personal laboratory at home, and you're the only one who use it, and how to use it, etc. In that case, could be safe, but you need to be careful. If you're curious, I just have one of these lasers just behind. Um, sorry, what else? So let's go for laser cut materials. Here on the page, you will find also a list, extended list of full laser cutter materials and why. Actually, this is one of the best guides and reference guides that I have ever found that explains exactly why you should not, or you should, or you maybe should not <laughs> uh, cut some respective materials. If you have any doubt of the material, just always go for, I always go for this reference guide. Uh, for example, HCP, that's a material that is difficult to ignite, or slightly more difficult than other plastics. We usually don't got it because it just catches fire easily. Like, and the smell that it produces, basically this plastic melts down and you don't cut it well. So if you want to actually cut a profile like this, and in the moment you start hitting this zone, the HDP heat ups more or less in like this, instead of vertically, basically what you are getting is a chunk of plastic that is melted like this and gluing pieces of plastic on the side. So for example, that's what happened with HDP and LDP plastics. You can cut them, yes, it's more or less safe to cut it like smoke-wise and yes, but not especially good. Um, for example, epoxy should not usually in general be laser cutted. Uh, fiberglass, you can cut it. Mm, for example, carbon fiber and fiberglass, the fact is, yes, you can actually cut them and it cuts well on the machine. What happened is this, what they say before, glass, carbon glass, it's a silicate. You basically are producing silicate dust and that is not good, neither for humans, neither for the machine. Uh, for example, silicates is what happened to actually the miners that is silicosis. After long exposure to silicates, they get like lung problems because of this kind of micromaterials. Um, food stuff in general, yes, <laughs> whatever, like, um, I have to be honest, I have cut a pizza and engraved pizza. It's a funny thing to do. I recommend to clean the machine properly before doing that, <laughs> especially because the machines, if you cut them there, you have like for, uh, formaldehyde stick to the machine and the dust that the, usually there is like brownish, dust sticky to the, all the sides of the machine that is like the glues of the material of the woods in general that is in general that is uh, formaldehyde just in the shape of glue and formaldehyde as you know is for preserving like dead life things so <laughs> um and it doesn't taste good i have to be honest <laughs> like it 
you can cut the pizza with a laser cutter and you can engrave it, but it just tastes like burn because basically what you're doing is burning the laser. Uh, cookies are better. <laughs> because a cookie in general is like already like toasted, so you don't really feel the flavor. Uh, you can make really nice things. Um, yesterday, for example, they, some people asked if you can uh, engrave, for example, metal on the laser cutters. That in general, no, because the, the CO2 laser cutter, the wavelength of the laser gets reflected by the metal. But another completely history happens, for example, we don't have, yes, no, that's an iPhone, uh, Mac? Yes. Max. Uh, Max, more well, aluminum made like household objects, in general aluminum, especially the ones that are sandblasted, like iPhones like or phones, like some phones, uh, they have a, a electromagnetic coating. It is actually to prevent the aluminum. Aluminum doesn't get rusty, like iron, but gets rusty with a thin layer of transparent material. Aluminum, in the moment you're exposed to air, after cutting it, it gets rusted. The difference, we don't see rust. We see aluminum, we see a perfect transparent cut, so it looks like always new. So phones and this kind of aluminum households, they make electromagnetic coatings and they have a really thin layer of protection too, to add more protection to those elements, apart from sandblasting. And what you can do in the laser is actually take out that little layer. And that will produce the effect of actually just you're engraving the metal. What you are not doing is actually engraving the metal, what you are doing is engraving the coating of the metal. That will produce, a, uh, I don't know, iPhone engraving, quite you will see in a lot of places. Actually, the back of the iPhones and the... The hmm? The yeah, depends. Oh, yeah, of course, like the one. Or the logos depends on the model of the iPhone, the, the year generation. I say iPhone, but that's applied for other devices. Uh, it's actually engraved. It's laser engraved. And you can do this, for example, with a CO2 laser like this one. I have seen and I can show you maybe the video, but the guy that tried didn't align well the iPhone, so he got a tilted text for the rest of the life of the device. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I don't know where, where I can do this. Mm -hmm. That would be machines, maybe. Yeah, here, I think. This video is about more things, but I want to show you. This is a CO2 laser. Yeah, here. So he got sexy iPhone, tilted. <laughs> and this is a standard, like, this is actually a Chinese laser cutter, like, but it's small size, so that's why also can move fast. Um, yes, we can also do these kind of things. What else? Uh, we are aware in the material guide. Um, cutting, I always state the rule as, as it's naturally made, on, like, like you can find it in nature in kind of some kind of way, you can always engrave it. That I will state for natural biomaterials, not for example, coal or a stone. You can find it on this also in the nature but the engraving stone could be done, but you can need a lot of power of the laser, this forcing and you produce dust that you don't want to have, like for example, woods, plywoods, and the paper, cork. Cork is an element that is difficult to cut, but you got to cut the wood set in a speed value, so it cuts really well. Um, plexiglass, acryl, acryl, lucidite, plexiglass, PPAMA is actually the same, just different like, uh, com com commercial or non commercial names. Capton tape, that is polyvinyl. Uh, Estyrene, I don't recommend. 
in general to cut. Also for acrylic, there are two types of acrylic uh, to the plates. Uh, there are, and actually it's really easy to differentiate on two things. One is the price. You can have like three millimeter acrylic of 20 euros and three millimeter acrylic of 30 euros. You will say, wow, like uh, they are messing up with me or what? This is still the same. No, the transparency is a slightly different reflectivity, like, and also how this made. One is made by extrusion. So you have a, the machine has a thin profile. It's actually pushing the plastic through to extrude it. Another one is doing by um, dropping. So basically they pour the liquid and they let it, it's called colada in Spanish. And they basically, they let the material flow and fill the tank of that is the mold of the three millimeter. So one, the expensive one is made by extrusion. So it has a constant thickness or way more constant thickness than the, the other one. And the quality of the plastic is slightly different. So they cut much better. The cheap one, in general, also, you can also feel by the smell. It smells different. And it smells way worse in general. So if I can recommend you, like, it's a good investment to always buy, like, extruded acryl or instead of the other one. Like, it deserves the price, deserves the quality of the plastic. It's slightly less brittle. It's more constant and more uniform. And also, it's slightly less toxic. It's at the end, we are just cutting plastic that produces some fumes and smokes. Mm -hmm. In general, the ones that for extruder is better than the other one. Um, mylar. Mylar is the, what we usually know, like aerospatial materials, and it's widely used, for example, in the emergency, like sheets that is like gold in one side and silver in the other one. That is really thin material for teeth protection. That one cuts really well, for example, in the laser cutters. Um, is, as I say here, gold coated mylar will not work, so you need to flip it, for example, to the silver side to cut it. <laughs> so silly, but uh, actually the, as it's really thin, thin material in general, the problem is actually to get a really low power settings to cut it well. Um, that, and then we have a lot of them, like really depends of uh, materials. Let's go for the next one and let's jump on to grasshopper a little bit, how to make a parametric one. Let's go on how to laser cut like a boss. So this is the most and better advanced guide that I ever found on how to laser cut. If you are really curious on machines, this is why you should cut, uh, how, you sh how you should cut actually in a machine. Let me clear this. I want to explain before one thing of the machine. So I will do it here. I have white space. So in all the machines, you have a machine that you have set up to cut this line. And then you have a design that is like this. Let's say the a standard slow speed for the machine is 10 and a fast speed for a machine is 100, no? I'm just made down these numbers. So machines, like everything, that exists as far as we know in the universe, if we want to make designs like this, if we have a speed time curve where this is time and this is a speed, starts in zero from the st steady position. And when you want to go to a certain location, you need to accelerate, reach that speed and accelerate, no? To stop. So actually the speed here, it will be accelerating. We reach the speed and we reduce to breakdown. What happened, for example, in here? We are constantly doing this because we need to accelerate and speed up to turn on the corners. Will happen the same that you are in the highway with your car. You can go at 200 miles per hour or if you are on a mountain road, you cannot go at 100 miles per hour. You can go at 50 miles per hour, for example. So that will happen something similar. Even if you want to set up a machine to cut at 300, let's say, of a speed, the machine could only be reached that, that in some situations. So for example, if you set up to cut at 10, maybe the machine will reach to cut at 10 in that position. But if you 
in this straight line you tell it to cut at 300, the machine will constantly accelerate until it has to decelerate to actually break down. So actually the consistency of the cut, and this is about consistency of the cut, will not be the same. And depend, this will depend especially on the type of machine that you're using. This is managed differently between different machines. So if you have a power of X setup, for example, 50, what is happening? Here we are cutting more, here we are cutting less, and here we are cutting more. Just because we are actually managing different speeds with the same power. That is like a standard, the silliest machine. Machines compensate for this or try to compensate for it. They do it better or worse. For example, one of the reasons also, like you know, you have to see this, no? What? You have seen this in the Chinese. Yeah, yeah, yeah. On, on engraving, you can see the shadows in the. the exactly. Of the... So some machines, some software interfaces manage this better than other ones. So, for example, let's say a Chinese laser cutter, CO2 laser cutter, manages this way worse than, for example, a Trotec. It's a less noticeable effect, but this is still there. Like they try to compensate. So mm -hmm. it's important that when you set up speeds and power, and actually, this is, for example, something that you could try in the test, in the group test, is like, how are we able to notice this effect? Maybe you are cutting in this area, but in the highest speed area of the machine, you don't get the cut in the middle of the line. So that could reach that maybe you are cutting this square, and this is a common thing, really common thing, that basically the mat you, your cut only gets through the material <laughs> like this. Because in this area, you're going slower, so you are applying more force, more power, you are speeding up, you are don't put enough energy in this area, and then you slow down and you cut. So that's why when you do a test on the laser cut, you need to do it with two different geometries. You need to do it with a, squ with a square and a circle. Why? Because the circle has the perfect balance between the speeds and movements over the whole shape. So it gives you the average of the cut in a, a b-dimensional move compared to a square one. Did you got this? Yes? No? OK. It's quite important to run this kind of test. Like, it's not the same testing with a square than testing with a circle. And also, that engraving in engraving changes. For example, in the Trotec, the settings for engraving are slightly different than the, for cutting in how they manage the speeds and powers. Said that, that I will say that is one of the most important things to know about the machine they are, you are using. We can talk about compliant joints. That means how to make joinery. Yesterday, we showed you joinery that is like a living hinge and finger tendons. That is a basic connection for press fitting. But there are way more things apart from that. And if you are interested and you like a lot of this kind of fabrication, I recommend you to take a look at the 50 digital joints that not, not only there are for laser cutters, but also for CNC and something that you can it's like a compendium of this is of wood joints that you can work with on laser cutter or CNC. Most of them are for CNC, but some of them are applicable for laser cutter. Um, what else? Let's go. Laser cut like a boss. So basically, it's how to make clip connections, snap fit joints, and really lattice hinges. And they all will well, hide video panel, hide floating meeting controls, yes. And for example, they will show you the elastic, the elasticity of the materials, and that will actually tell you the amount of bending that you can eject on these materials. For living hinges, I recommend always to cut the living hinge opposite to the grain of the wood, because what you want to have is consistency on the lines on the grain of this connection. To make it stronger and this is a com really compendium guide on how to do lattice hinges for example in case you want to cut acryl acryl is a really brittle material has a really small elastic modulus so that means when you cut 
acryl and you cut a small a sharp square that even if we take an augmentation lens the square is not exactly square it's slightly rounded because the laser is actually making the turn of the polyline and has at the dot size at size zero two millimeter this is a breaker point so if you make forces like this the acryl will break in this direction so one way to avoid that is actually instead of doing a straight line is doing kind of a this is usually called a dog bone that is a release force area circle that will actually distribute the forces of breaker evenly in all the directions of the material or you can also do it in round circle but if you have a press fit joinery it will not fit so that will depend on what you want to do this you can draw with drawing points or you can make small details like this and this actually improves a lot the resistance of acrylic a lot like you can believe it <laughs> one two millimeter you can make them really small uh, for example a lattice hinge for compression. So that means devices that you can compress and expand. Uh, I don't, I think we have a few of them right now, but like all these things are like made of objects from years, students, stuff, and stuff. I don't know, but I have seen this in the exhibition somewhere. <laughs> I think maybe they're in the lamps that are hanging on the entrance. Um, lattice anatomy, how to get more, for example, stiffness or more bending capabilities depends on the ratio proportion between the width and the length. It's like 21 pages or snap fit cantilevers that are really cool to make joineries. Uh, tenemos, no, side. <laughs> sí, sí. Uh, for example, also, another thing is depends on the material you use, you can produce rays. For example, acryl is a really smooth material and it's really even. Uh, it doesn't grab, for example, it grab humidity or water. You can use them for making rays. For example, this is a dry ray. It's just made with a small tolerance. Mm -hmm. Actually, ideally, you cut two sides and you cut the same shape of a piece of paper and that with the thickness of a piece of paper, you've got enough tolerance to actually make a slice. And if you don't get slide, you can just put a drop of oil and it will slide like really, really well. This is a dry joinery. Just, uh, this is thick acrylic, but the laser has, this is CNC, but you can also do it in the laser cut. Actually, last year, one student did a really big acrylic mold that needs to rotate one surface against another one and just make it fit and put a lot of oil to actually make it rotate. So we got a 360 turntable just by making a good tolerance between the laser cuts. Um, I don't know if we have more flexible things around. This is our sketches. Uh, for example, this is about the snap fit joineries and how to design. So usually in these kinds of designs, you have a centering knot and then you have a flexible knot. So how it depends on the material, for example, if it's wood, you can make these tenons really short so it doesn't bend a lot. In case of acrylic, you don't want to break it. So what you will do is elongate these tenons a lot. So actually the cantilever is bigger and by so the material will be flexible and you can make the connections without breaking. I'm trying to remember where is this because we have it, but I don't know exactly where. I done one like that last year. Well, and these are calculators. So you all got your SolidWorks and X Design licenses, no? Not SolidWorks X Design. That is the online SolidWorks. Uh, with SolidWorks, you can have these kind of FAA calculators to make flexible um, this is a guy that's playing with SOLIDWORKS but I think X-Design can do the same even so here you have SOLIDWORKS installed uh, snap fit rotating rotation joineries that are quite cool because you can make a rotation axis like a drive bearing also with these elements and how to make them uh, fit is you make a design that is 
like that. You make a little curve, destroy material, so you get a bounce area of ring that actually allows you to insert another element. These are really extended guide with dimensions and everything. That's why it's called laser cut like a boss. <laughs> and last, last thing, this guide not only includes the guide in PDF, but also here we have like uh, download files of SolidWorks and Illustrator of the vector. So you have already made up the designs so you need to produce them. You just can copy and modify them to test them. It's quite good. Yes. No idea. I don't use SolidWorks. Sorry. <laughs> no idea. I know. I know. I know that has the guide and has the information, but I don't know. Never got the opportunity to test it. Um, so this, if you want to find it, is here. How to laser cut like a boss, and more information on how to make. Uh, models. Another thing that is really interesting is using to bend plastic. Is, for example, what happened? The laser produces heat, no? When it's focused. So, when you cut a material, when the laser is focused like this in the point, what happens if you want to heat a material, but the laser is either focused in the air or on focus it farther on. You have a big area of heating. So actually, materials, plastic materials can bend on heat if they are a thermoset plastic. So acryl it is. So what you can do is, and actually this is a really, really good, I don't know if you have the video. Yes, this one. This a video is way better than me for explaining this. Let's go. Mm -hmm. Okay. So basically you can, for example, cut the shape with the focus well done. When we have finished the cut, what we can do is like move the bed down. It means unfocus the laser and make a raster, a small rectangle of raster, so actually we make a lot of small movements in the same area to actually heat the material. And they call it laser origami. So basically you move down and you make a raster to actually heat the material and let the piece, for example, fall by gravity on its own weight. So, that's why, for example, here it has like these standoffs to hold the material. Yes, if the material is stick to the bed, it's impossible to do it. Unless you heat it a lot, you open the door fast and you do it by hand. That I don't recommend, but. <laughs> uh, for example, you can do it. Another way to do this is a design laser. Phone holder stand. OK. So in this case, uh, it was a piece that has a certain geometry that I waffle it with a slicer 360 fusion. Actually, let's draw it. Uh, like for fusion, we can do it. Import. I will copy the file outside so it's easier to find. This is another technique that you can do is import laser phone in case you want to bend and it's not a let's say a 90 degrees angle. This is a rotation part to allow different kind of rot of bendings. Select and technique interlock slices. So basically, in this case, it's not like that. Is mm -hmm. yeah, was designed something similar to this. So it's a 3D model that is made out of waffle in the laser cut. This is a small, and with a piece of acryl that was flat. Then you put the the piece of 
mold inside and you with the heat gun you start heating up the material and bending with protection gloves like heat protection gloves to bend into the shape so actually you can make a phone stand really silly but with a certain you don't do it freestyle by hand you do it with a mold that you can also produce on the laser cut in this case this mold was done in cardboard because it was not meant to last a lot but you can make it in wood and produce a lot of units out of it so i think that you can also make three-dimensional molds this mold you don't want to have this but it works as a guideline to produce a smooth object that is slimsier like this one 